afternoon. Um, uh, my name's Rob Taylor. I work for a company called Rotorway, which is a, uh, a subsidiary of an environmental, uh, energy environmental group. And uh, we, uh, we develop technology uh, related to, to biomass. Uh, now, I think we all know that the demands that are being placed on power generation, uh, there's a growing energy demand uh, fueled by uh, a population growth. Uh, I think uh, only recently David Attenborough called us a plague, uh, and it's, uh, we're not going to reverse that trend uh, in the immediate future. And more so, uh, as the population grows, there's uh, improving standards in, in what's called the third world, as, as, as they, uh, they develop and their standard of living rises, their energy consumption. And this isn't, this isn't a, a, a theoretical question that has to be answered. This is a, this is a fact that's happening now. You know, this, is, this is not some projection for the future. The population has been growing for, for millennia and it's going to continue to, to grow. Uh, so there's going to be a, there's an ever-growing demand for energy. And uh, if you... Uh, how, how is that being met? Well, it's being met by opening new power stations. If, if you Google coal-fired power stations, you'll find uh, uh, an ever-growing list. There's more and more coal-fired power stations uh, 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 built and brought online. So, having ex uh, accepted that inescapable truth, then uh, how do we? How is the power generation industry? Uh, uh, meeting the, uh, the challenges that are put on it. Uh, there's a requirement for clean fossil fuel technology, uh, carbon capture, etc. And there's, of course, renewables. But with this growing demand, we, we have to accept, I think, that renewables will not replace fossil fuel in, in the, the short or medium term. So we have to find an answer of how, uh, how we can uh, address that. And, and, and one of the ways of addressing it that uh, the power generation industry have embraced is, uh, is, is a time-honoured one, which is uh, actually burning biomass. Biomass is the world's fourth largest energy resource. It's renewable and, and in the right circumstances, sustainable. It's cost-effective with, with respect to other renewable energy sources. Uh, it can provide the uh, energy industry with a base load. It's not influenced by external factors such as weather. And, and as I said, it's commercially proven. Uh, the quickest way of, uh, of implementing a, a biomass uh, uh, introduction is, of course, through coal substitution. And there is, particularly in the UK, a another, some other driving forces to, to substitute coal. One is the large plant combustion directive, which is actually closing power stations now, since they do not meet their environmental emissions. Uh, and uh, the other is through uh, the uh, ETS scheme, which is putting a, a tax on carbon, which is again Europe-wide. And these, uh, these sticks will continue to be used to force the power generation industry into looking at ways of uh, clean energy generation. Uh, the uh, EU have their 2020 goal, uh, and uh, they predict that that will be achieved, at least in part, by uh, a 50% increase in biomass consumption. However, there are, there are problems with biomass as a fuel. As I've listed here, it's, it's poor long-term stability. It, it rots and it uh, degrades. It's sensitive to water. Its fibrous nature makes it difficult to grind, and therefore it loses a lot of energy to prepare it, to make energy. Uh, it's very difficult to handle at times. It has a very low energy density, uh, and which gives it poor transport economics. Uh, and that's a real factor for biomass because Lots of biomass grows where very few people live. So there's very little energy demand in that immediate vicinity. So how do you get the biomass energy cost-effectively to the population centers that generate the electricity? 
electricity. One, one method of, uh, that has been proposed to achieve that is through a, a, a process called torrefaction. Torrefaction is actually uh, heating the biomass in, a, in the absence of uh, air. Again, it's not new technology, but it, it does produce a stable material, converts the biomass into a, a non-biodegradable material. It is, produces a, a hydrophobic material, so it's not water sensitive. It, it removes the fibrous structure, so it becomes brittle and therefore can be handled in, uh, uh, easily handled in milling uh, coal mills. It's totally compatible with coal handling equipment. It had, and it has a high energy density, giving it the improved transport economics, which allows you then to, uh, to move the material around globally to bring the energy to where the population centers are, where the energy demand is. Uh, what is torrefaction? I'm not going to be uh, too technical on this, but it, 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 it's he effectively heating the, uh, heating the biomass in the, in the absence of oxygen. Uh, to, a, a, to around about 200 degrees C uh, to increase the energy density. Sounds pretty simple. Unfortunately, uh, biomass is, is a very good insulator. So actually getting the heat into the biomass to convert it is not as straightforward as one would think. Unless, unless you break the mold and you don't think of thermal heat, when you think to what heat is, which is energy, and how do you, how can I, how can one transfer energy into the center of something very efficiently? And the solution is microwaves. And we are fortunate in biomass that there are microwave active sites, first of all in the water that's contained in the, in the cellular structure in the biomass, and also in the biomass itself. So we have a high penetrating non-contact energy source that can actually put the energy straight into the, the, the material that you want uh, with no uh, impact of the insulating characteristics. And what does that allow us to do? That allows us to actually treat uh, ordinary produced wood chip and produce a very consistent product. Much more can System than a, an actually thermally produced uh, char material. Uh, on the left, you can see one that's been produced by a standard uh, thermal process. And on, on the right there, the, the, the rotoid char, uh, which, as you can see, is hardly unchanged, except it's gone very brown, and very brown all the way through. Uh, the process itself uh, uses uh, microwave energy, but uh, it also creates gas which can be converted into thermal energy and electrical energy for drying uh, or and even export if, if necessary. It produces, uh, the, the char can be easily converted, because the roadway char is so, uh, so consistent, it's easily converted into a, a high density pellet. Again, improving the uh, econo transport economics. And, and you start to get a fuel which actually starts to look a little like coal in, in, in terms of its calorific value, its energy density. It has a low ash, low sulfur content. It has high energy density and a low GHG. So how does it compare? There's a, a, a slide there comparing coal, green wood chip, wood pellets and biocoal pellets as we call it. And on the bottom, we've shown a little schematic of, uh, of the transport difference between moving wood chips and moving biocoal pellets. Uh, quite significant saving in transport costs. Saving in transport costs is also a saving, of course, in uh, carbon emissions and improvement of the GHG. And as ever with all this new technology, the proof of the pudding is in our case Thermogen Industries, who are a partner in this, in is building the first rotaway plant in Millinocket, Maine. They will be producing 100,000 tons a year of uh, biocoal pellets for sale on the European power generation market, and will be up and running 
the end of this year. Thank you.